Brian, you want to maybe comment on some of the um, biomechanical aspects that he was yeah, referring so to of, all people? For sure, yeah. So one of the things we used to talk about similarly at Auburn was um, shifting to a shoulder-driven freestyle. And around sort of the mid to late 2000s, that really did start to, to take off. Um, and and that was a, a popular thing. So, John, you're saying like, well, who's teaching different styles of freestyle? And I think that um, you would see that Mike Bottom at Cal, David Marsh at Auburn, Dave Dirt here at, at Cal would be teaching what I would call a, a shoulder-driven freestyle. Um, and the thinking there is that you're, you're – your shoulder is driving the the cycle around and it's not so much what your arm is doing in the recovery right but that you're leading with your shoulder and so there'd be a lot of drills that we would do technically like that um you know and i think that the the point around the simplicity of the stroke is is certainly prudent and coming back to the undulation of butterfly and where you know i've heard um you know Wade, who we had on our podcast uh, several months ago, who swam at Texas with Crocker and Hanson and some of those guys, one of the things he talked about the way that Eddie teaches butterfly dolphin kicking is the the smaller the undulation, uh, the better because you know any uh, you know apex or peak of the curve outside of the straighter line is taking you off of the path of being at Crocker in the story is watching Roland Schumann, who in 2005 was the best starter in the world, for sure, better than Crocker. And there's an iconic video of from behind the blocks, you can find it on YouTube today, of Crocker and Schumann starting the 50 fly in Montreal Worlds 2005. If you pause the video correctly, all you see are Schumann's feet. Huh. And then you see Crocker's legs. And the thing is, Schumann had his body in 100% a straight line. It's the broomstick example. You hit the water and boom, you accelerate because your body is exactly flat. Um, and some of these ideas are the types of things that Milo was talking about or, that you would pick up at Cal working with Mike Bottom. And these, the, 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 some of the paradigm and the way of thinking was shifting into a much more simplistic approach. I would just want to follow up with you and ask about your butterfly as it progressed too. How what what are some of the things in Butterfly that you would think about that also you think um, really led to your success? Hey, so on that on that note of you know the the undulation and uh, you know we 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 started looking at track athletes doing hurdles, and and you look at their head, their head literally stays in the same line even as they jump over the hurdle. And, and, and if you think about it, it's all about forward moving energy. If, if your body or that head would go above where it would normally go, you know, it's, it's, there's too much movement. You know, your head wants to, it's kind of like a, you know, kind of like a bow and arrow. You know, once you release that arrow, it's flying and it's flying straight. Now imagine if that arrow went upwards, it would have changed the trajectory of the energy moving forward. So, you know, um, you know, we, we started thinking about, you know, what can we do to just kind of keep it, you know, the forward moving energy and, and it was to reduce undulation. To do this, you know, it would, uh, it would require a whole lot more upper body strength. You're going to fade a little sooner. But um, yeah, you know, uh, other than, you know, like uh, when we eliminated the S movement underwater, you know, that was one, that was one way. Um, you know, one other thing that you're seeing more and more today, and it wasn't a thing, is as soon as you breathe in the butterfly and the breaststroke, you'll see a lot of people go and drop their face. So they're dropping their faces before the recovery of their arms. In breaststroke, their, their arms would be at their chest, they would drop their face, and then they drive their arms forward. So, so in, in the breaststroke, those that keep their head upwards, the energy is going upward into this peak and then downward. Whereas if, if you take a breath and you drop your face, is, is as soon as you po possibly can, it turns more into a wave instead of a spike going upward and then downward in that in that energy. So we're just looking at energy going upwards and what direction is it going. So yeah, you know we we reduce the amplitude of the kick. They were smaller kicks. Um, you know I think I think one thing that people uh, are 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 forgetting about a lot of times is that second kick in the fly. They don't give it enough love. You know, so so really that second kick, similar with the freestyle, the freestyle, the freestyle six feet kick, it's constant. Well, in the butterfly, it's got to be a constant move. It's got to keep going. You cannot be kick, 
a big kick, small kick, a big kick, small kick. No, it's got to be, you know, it's got to keep going. And, and with that, with that movement, it gives you continuity and energy going forward without stopping. No, I think that's uh, really important. And I think as we're talking about kind of energy distribution and moving on a forward line, there's a lot of debate on underwater dolphin kick. And obviously um, in butterfly and almost every stroke now, underwater dolphin kick is huge. And we have Caleb Dressel still doing relatively big undulations where some of the other um, elite sprinters are doing more shorter amplitude, shorter undulations. What are your current views on underwater dolphin kick and undulation and energy distribution? Um, you know, one thing that you have to recognize and everyone's got to recognize is there is no one right way to do it. There are just, uh, there are just wrong ways to kind of stay away from, I think, um, depending on the proportion of, of whether your torso is long and your legs are short, or you've got really long legs and a shorter torso that it, 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 cha it depends on, 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 you know, who we're kind of talking about. Um, I, you know, it, it's, it, it's, you know, we've always kind of said, you know, that the winner is, is doing it the right way because they're the champions. Well, that's not necessarily right. You know, um, you know, a, a lot of, a lot of, a lot of videos have been made on, on, on Phelps's butterfly. Uh, and, and again, you know, if you look at it from a physical and a physics point of view, maybe it's not the most efficient and that's not me saying, Hey, like, you know, I'm, you know, a lot of people would say, you know, he's, he's jealous or, you know, he, you know, he, the winner is the winner. That is the right way. But again, if you kind of take a step back and, and kind of analyze it, it's like, well, what do we, what do we need to do to, to help us go forward? Um, you know, with Dressel having that big amplitude, I mean, the guy is just so dominant underwater. Can you really say that he's wrong? You can't, you know, but um, I, I, I'm a firm believer of, of, do whatever you got to do. And maybe I, I just believe that Dressel is so incredibly powerful with that up kick, just as powerful as with that down kick that he really utilizes that feel for the water. And that's why he wants to keep it really, really big. Whereas most people, they've, they've got a great down kick, but not as much or not as strong of an up kick. So it's kind of hard to, to, to determine, but I think, I think depending on, on the proportions of your body, uh, you, you got to play with the tools, whatever you got.